do you know Atacama Desert situated in South America is the driest place in the world this place has turned into a desert because of its geographical location in this picture we can see the Atacama Desert which is the driest place in the world and this place has turned into a desert because of its geographical location now this map shows the geographical location of Atacama Desert from this map we can see that the Atacama Desert is located in the western side of Andes Mountains so this is Andes Mountains and Atacama Desert is located here in the western side of Andes Mountains now Andes Mountains blocks the monsoon winds coming from the east so this eastern side of the mountain range receives rainfall whereas Atacama Desert which is located in the western side of Andes Mountains receives minimum rainfall and therefore this place has turned into a desert. So here we see that rainfall is determined by a mountain range. Let's see how. The winds prevailing in a region pick up moisture from the sea as they move over the water bodies and due to this the air become moist. Now as this warm moist air ascends over the hill or mountain it slowly condenses. This is because as we move higher the temperature drops. Now the air becomes saturated and the process of condensation begins with formation of clouds. These clouds eventually become heavier and they shade rainfall in the windward side of the mountain. Windward side is the side of the mountain that faces the wind. Now by the time the air descends over the other side of the mountain it becomes cool and dry as its moisture content decreases. Now this side of the rain wall that lies to the opposite side of wind direction is known as the leeward side and here we have no rainfall or little amount of rainfall and this region is known as rain shadow region and it lies in the leeward side of the mountain range. In the previous video, we learned that rainfall is caused when moisture laden winds move up the slopes of a mountain and sheet rainfall. Now this type of rainfall is known as orographic rainfall where the word orographic means it is related to a mountain. So this type of rainfall that is determined by a mountain range is known as orographic rainfall. Now if you remember I mentioned that Atacama Desert is a dry region because it is located in the leeward side of Andes Mountains and so Atacama Desert receives little rainfall and it has turned into a dry arid region. Have you ever heard of 4 o'clock shower? Well, if you have not heard that, then let me tell you, equatorial rain forest experience 4 o'clock shower. It is very surprising, isn't it? But it's true. So the equatorial rain forest of the world like Amazon rainforest, Congo rainforest and Southeast Asian rainforest experience 4 o'clock shower. Now let us see how this rainfall occurs. This type of rainfall occurs when the earth's surface gets heated up due to sun rays during day. The hot surface heats up the air lying above it and the hot air eventually rises up. The cold air sinks down this rising of warm air and sinking of cold air sets up convectional currents now due to heat the water vapor also evaporates 
and this water vapor gradually condenses into water drops on reaching high and the process of condensation begins and clouds are formed. Now eventually these clouds become heavy and they shade rainfall. So in the previous video we saw that sometimes rainfall is caused when hot air rises up from the earth's surface along with water vapor and eventually condenses and causes rainfall. Now this type of rainfall that is induced by convectional currents is known as convectional rainfall. Now I mentioned that convectional rainfall is also known as 4 o'clock shower and it mostly occurs in equatorial regions. This is because equatorial region receives substantial amount of heat or maximum sun's heat during daytime and by the time of evening the process of condensation ends up and precipitation begins. Thus the clouds that are formed shades rainfall by the time of evening. So every day at 4 o'clock the equatorial regions receive 4 o'clock shower or convectional rainfall. Sometimes rainfall is also caused when warm tropical air converges with cold polar air. The contact zone of these two air masses is known as front. The warm tropical air being less dense rise over the cold polar air which is more dense. Now this warm tropical air is usually moisture laden. The warm tropical air gradually condenses on coming in contact with cold polar air and leads to cloud formation. These clouds eventually become heavier and they shed rainfall. So in the previous video we saw that rainfall occurs when warm tropical air converges with cold polar air. This type of rainfall is known as cyclonic or frontal rainfall. It is known as frontal rainfall because these rainfall occurs at the front that is the contact zone of two air masses. It is also known as cyclonic rainfall because the type of wind that cause these rainfall is cyclonic in nature. Now before we proceed with our lesson, let us try to answer this question. Identify the type of rainfall that occurs when warm tropical air and cold polar air meet. Is it orographic rainfall, convectional rainfall or cyclonic rainfall? Yes, the correct answer is cyclonic rainfall. Cyclonic rainfall is a type of rainfall that occurs when warm tropical air and cold polar air meet. Now let us continue with our lesson. This world map shows the worldwide distribution of rainfall. In this map the regions marked by blue are the regions that receive high amount of rainfall that is a rainfall of more than 200 centimeter of precipitation annually and these regions are mostly equatorial regions. Also the regions that lies in the lap of the mountain ranges that is the northeastern parts of India and these western side of North America are the regions that receive high amount of precipitation or high amount of rainfall. The next is the region that receives moderate amount of rainfall and these regions are marked by shade of green in the wall map. And we can see that the eastern side of North America, northern most part of South America and some parts of Europe. Also some parts of Africa that is the central region of Africa that lie close to the region of high 
rainfall receive moderate rainfall also substantial part of india or maximum portion of indian subcontinent receive moderate rainfall these regions receives an annual rainfall of 100 to 200 cm we can also see that some regions in this world map are marked in peach color these regions receive low amount of rainfall the annual rainfall received by these places ranges between 50 to 100 centimeter and these regions are central part of north america some parts of south america the innermost part of europe and asia and some parts of australia mainly the central region of australia lastly we have the regions that receive scanty rainfall or very less amount of rainfall this regions receives an annual rainfall of 0 to 50 centimeter the regions that receive scanty rainfall mostly lie in high latitudes also the tropical deserts and temperate deserts of africa and asia respectively receive scanty rainfall a substantial portion of australia also receive scanty rainfall so from this map we can understand worldwide distribution of rainfall can you name the wettest place in the world yes Mohsen Ram, situated in Meghalaya, is the wettest place in the world. This place receives an annual rainfall of 250 cm on an average. And also, if you remember, in the previous world map, we saw that this region that is the northeastern part of india is the region that receives high amount of rainfall and mosim ram a place in this region is the wettest place in the world now i just mentioned that this place receives an annual rainfall of 250 centimeter now how do we measure the amount of rainfall received by a place the instrument that is used by meteorologists to measure the amount of liquid precipitation or rainfall of a particular area over a certain period of time is known as rain gauge. So rain gauge is the scientific instrument used to measure the amount of rainfall of a particular place. Now, this is the picture of a rain gauge and here in this picture we can see that the rain gauge is placed in an open ground now this is the correct way to place a rain gauge this is because if this instrument is kept close to a tree or a building then it will receive extra water drops from the trees and buildings and will give incorrect reading so it is important to place this object or this instrument in an open ground. Now look at this picture. In this picture we can see the internal structure of a rain gauge. A rain gauge is mostly composed of three main parts. A glass jar, a measuring cylinder and a funnel. This funnel is used in rain gauge as it prevents splashing out of rain water now a cylinder collects the amount of precipitation and this cylinder is mostly calibrated now if you look at this picture carefully then you can see a hole in the measuring cylinder a hole is kept in the measuring cylinder for a definite purpose the cylinder can hold rain water up to a certain limit if 
the amount of rainfall is more than the capacity of the cylinder then the extra water will come out from this hole and it will be collected in the glass jar so that's why a hole is present in the measuring cylinder as the overflowing water will be stored in the glass jar so this is the entire structure of a rain gauge also i would like to mention one thing the units of measuring rainfall is mostly millimeter or centimeter so the calibrations done in the measuring cylinder are in either millimeter or centimeter so now let's see how rainfall is measured using this instrument this measuring cylinder can measure up to 2 cm of rainfall as rain falls the rain water is collected in this object now the extra water is collected in the glass jar firstly 2 cm of rain water is poured and kept aside and the extra water is then poured in the measuring cylinder and we can see the extra water is 0.5 cm so the total amount of rainfall collected for the day is 2 cm plus 0.5 cm which is equal to 2.5 cm look at this map of india this map shows the amount of precipitation or rainfall received by places all over india here we can see that some places receive 50 cm of rainfall while there are places that receive 100 cm of rainfall and also there are places that receive 250 cm of rainfall so now let us join these dots that receive same amount of rainfall similarly we will join the dots of the places that receive 100 cm of rainfall and similarly we will do it for the places that receive 250 cm of rainfall now these imaginary lines that join the places having or receiving same amount of rainfall over a given period of time are known as isoheights so these lines are different isoheights each of these isoheights represent the same amount of rainfall received by the places now the word iso means similar or same and heights means rain so the places that receive same or similar amount of rainfall are connected by isoheights so in today's video we first discussed about different types of rainfall the different types of rainfall are orographic rainfall convectional rainfall and cyclonic or frontal rainfall then we understood how to measure rainfall the instrument that is used to measure rainfall is rain gauge and finally we studied about isoheights so this is the end of the chapter don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now